Hello. Hi. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you doing? Very good. Thanks for asking. We're going to get a bunch of people, I think, popping in from the waiting room and, and kind of trickling in as we get started here. Hey, everybody. Hello. Um, we're still getting people kind of popping in um, from the waiting room. Um, and I will probably start saying a few things I will repeat later as more people kind of come in. But um, welcome, everybody. Um, I was a screener this year for the Big Apple um, Film Festival, which, as I keep saying, was a terrible job this year. There were so many great films. I was only supposed to recommend a couple, and I was like, but I love so many of these movies. It's just mind-blowing, all the the talent involved with this festival and just the heart and 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 the meaning that a lot of people brought to these films just blew me away. Um, and we've had all these great, wonderful, like small session panels. My challenge as a moderator is I'm terrible at interrupting people. And we get these great discussions that go back and forth and become really organic. And it's hard to tell people to stop. But I sometimes what happens is the people who come last really draw the short end of the stick and they don't get a lot of time left. So I'm going to try to keep everyone sort of to their time um, asking if you can you know, describe um, either your project and some advice and or feedback we could give that would be helpful in like a one to two minutes. That way it enables multiple panelists to jump in and offer their feedback and their thoughts. Or sometimes people have had some really cool just general career questions like people have asked, you know, I've won all these awards and I feel like I've made all this progress. Now I'm trying to get my first writer's assistant job and I'm not having any luck. What's your advice? Or, you know, a lot of people have had success in one area of the industry and wanted to transition to another and gotten stuck because they're the person that's known for that one thing. And those career questions are really awesome too. And people have had some just mind blowing, really thought provoking um, answers. So um, that's, that's my thoughts. Um, try to take not too much time with your general bio so we can dig into the specific project or questions that that we can help with and have a lot of time for everyone to weigh in. Um, and I'll, I starting by introducing the panelists. Um, I'll start with you. Haley, is it Haley? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, right. <laughs> if you want to tell us a bit about who you are and your journey and, and what you're working on and what you're really excited about right now, we'd love to hear it. Yeah, um, so I, I'm, in a, I'm a scripted agent over at APA. I've been here for about six years. I've been an agent for about three years. And um, I mean, I think the things that get me excited is just, I mean, I, I mainly am a feature film agent. Um, I will help with TV development and TV directing every once in a while, but I think my bread and butter is feature films just because I, I love it. And I think that the pendulum, pendulum is swinging a little bit back towards feature films just a hair right now. Um, I mean, I think the things that I'm really excited about are just like movies and scripts and shows that are just, I don't know, I think so. I'm a very mood person, so I'll wake up and be like, what do I feel like watching today? And like, I feel like right now I'm just in the mood for just like really either fun, just big kind of event type of movies um, or really kind of horrifying ones, which I'm not a big horror person at all. I just watch Barbarian. Uh, the other day, but for some reason, it was something that I was just really excited to watch. So I think so there's just some interesting concepts and trailers that come out recently that I'm really excited about uh, versus like, the, I think the typical, like I know with the award season coming along, like some of the really slow burn dramas are not the things I'm gravitating towards as much right now. I think so the things that just kind of are not the, the standards that you find coming out uh, in theaters, um, like Banshee or something like that is something that I'm excited about. That's really cool. Thank you for sharing that. It'll be interesting to hear later, maybe as you weigh in on people's projects, your thoughts about features kind of coming back. That sounds really intriguing. I want to hear more about that. Um, yeah, happy to. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. And Alex, do you want to jump in and tell us a bit about who you are and what you've been working on and, and what you're excited about right now? Uh, sure. Hi, I'm Alex. I uh, wear a lot of hats in the industry. I am a physical producer, a former VP of development um, and production. So I'm kind of a VP of development and production for hire. You can hire me at any point of your process from development to actual production. Um, and I'll carry stuff through there. I am currently the um, head a uh, creative producer for Blizzard's YouTube original content channel, which is a channel they are starting to support the Diablo 4 uh, game launch. 
which will start kicking into gear um, next year. Uh, I'm also a trained intimacy coordinator, and from the development side, I am mostly known for doing sensitivity reading. So I evaluate projects for unconscious bias and potential uh, problematic content. And I do that actually beyond the film industry. My biggest client is one of the bigger NFT makers. <laughs> Uh, so I evaluate their images. Um, so I do a lot of things and just bring all of that into alignment to just tell really fun stories. Um, I am looking forward to Severance Season 2. Uh, and I am looking forward to Magic Mike 3. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Obviously, the trailer yet. Yeah, I just I it kept popping up. I was like, I'll watch this later. I'm excited <laughs> to watch it. <laughs> oh, that's awesome! I love that. Wow, that that is an inspiring resume. I wish we could have had you around for someone who was just asking a question about transitioning from one thing to another, and then there could be you saying you could do everything. It's it's awesome. That's a that's a really cool resume. I love it. I mean, the one thing I'll say about this industry that is both good and extremely frustrating is there's no one path to anything. And in this industry, I found that they'll let you at least try to transition your skills from one job to a vastly different job in a way that I don't see in other industries. So um, that is simultaneously great, but also very frustrating. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. And Trace, do you want to do you want to jump in and share a bit about who you are and and what you've been working on and anything you're super excited about right now? Sure. Um, <clears throat> well, first off, I agree with what Alex just said. That is one of the the good points and bad points about this industry for sure. Um, my name is Trace Labatkin. I am a writer, a producer, sometimes director. I graduated from USC Film School many years ago with um, one of Haley's uh, 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 part friends, partners, uh, Chris Reidenhauer. Uh, oh, okay. I was like, wait, which Chris person? <laughs> and I were, were good friends in film school. Oh, um, nice. And um, um, I've kind of run the gamut of of writing over the over the past many years, I've written features, sold features. Um, I've done a lot of work in TV. I've done a lot of work in the sort of unscripted reality phase, writing reality stuff, writing host copy, doing hidden camera shows. I worked on the reboot of pop-up video, uh, Biggest Loser, Beauty and the Geek. I just, uh, the one of the last projects I just did was a, a drag queen variety show to promote uh, Hulu's Huluween uh, uh, segment. Uh, so so I've done, I've kind of dabbled in a lot of different writing uh, styles and different genres. Um, and what am I excited about? Um, I mean, there's so many good good things, you know, that are on the streamers and and on TV these days. Such great content, and uh, uh, I'm excited to see uh, Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio. I just signed up for a screening of that, so I'm kind of excited to see that. Uh, yeah, the, the 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 combination of of him as a creator and storyteller with that material just seems really inspiring. Yeah. You know, because there's so much hauntedness and darkness kind of in the shadows of that story. And it'll be interesting to see what he does with that. I agree. That's really awesome, Trace. Well, I'm going to dig it to our attendees. And as I was saying, some of, I may have been saying this before some people came in. I'm a terrible moderator at cutting people off. So sometimes the people who come last end up having less time. I'm going to try to do a better job at keeping everyone kind of in your in your time zone because we have multiple really awesome um, industry panelists in this i want to have them time to everyone jump in and give their point of view if they feel inspired so try to share in like a minute or two um either the kind of career dilemma you have or the career question you have the roadblock you're facing or if it's a specific project and you just hit that point where you really want advice or feedback on where to take it next try to describe it in a minute or two and then and then they can jump in and and offer some feedback and help and thoughts. And I'm going to start with you, Jay, because in the, the other um, wonderful session we had, you were detained and, and you couldn't come until the end. And I never thought you got quite enough time. So jump in now. Okay. So my name is Jay Fallick. Um, for the past 20 plus years, I've been a software engineer um, and solutions architect on Wall Street. And I'm burnt out. 
I've always been an, had an inner storyteller to me and I took the plunge back in July and I started writing. And I've got about four screenplays that, I, that I've been juggling. One is, is really polished, the one that I submitted to this festival and I got a semi-finalist placing. Um, I got a consider from We Screenplay. I've gotten a lot of good notes all around. So I'm really happy with that. Um, one of my other ones is pretty close to like, you know, getting to the polish stage. So I guess what I'm looking at is someone like, I'm a 45 year old white heterosexual male living in New York. So I have lots of uh, things not necessarily in my favor there, where in, in some places that might be great and other things it's not so good. So as far as, you know, breaking into Hollywood, I find that that doesn't work in my favor as much. Um, I don't know anybody in the industry. I'm kind of all new to this. I don't know what I don't know. And I kind of just like figuring out, hey, when I have something that's good, do I submit that? Do I need to wait till I have more things? Because everyone said, oh, they want to see what else you have. And if everything else isn't quite polished enough, do I want to submit that? Um, should I stick to a single genre? Should I stick to just doing TV pilots or features? Like, is diversity better or work against me? And, you know, like I said, I don't know what I don't know. And I, I want to know you know, how to take the next step from where I'm at, because, you know, uh, I've gotten pretty good feedback. I'm, I'm very creative. I understand what I'm, you know, bringing to the table. And I have a, a huge amount of life experience and a ton of stories I want to tell. And I just want to know, I don't want to get in my own way. Yeah, I mean, on my side, I mean, it's like, are, Jay, do you lean, do you find yourself writing more features, writing more TV? Do you have a preference on the type of stuff you want to do in terms of as a storyteller? Well, um, I don't have a particular preference from, and I guess from a standpoint, I was told like, hey, TV requires a lot more presence in LA because you're going to, you know, be in rooms, whereas features you can do from anywhere. So from that perspective, it also might be like, well, sticking to features might be more lucrative as far as getting my foot in the door and then, you know, making a name for myself, in, in which case I can do that because I can't uproot my entire family and just move to LA right now. I'm not in my twenties. Um, yeah. you know, I, I have an established career that I, I want to get away from, but you know, I, I'm in a different point in my life and that whole being an assistant route isn't going to work for me uh, yeah. at this point. So, um, but I, I love both. Like I, um, I've got three TV pilots. Um, one of the, which ones is, which is the most fr furthest along. Um, and I have one feature, the other two TV pilots are not quite there yet. Um, and, and I have ideas for both, you know, the, the dramas or the, or the pilots. I have a rom-com as a feature. I have, you know, thrillers. I have all sorts of ideas in all sorts of places. I have an idea for a sitcom. Like, so I can go in any direction um, okay. and like that, I, like that. But I, again, I don't know if that hurts me is like, oh, we well, are all over the place and that's not good. And I should be more focused. And that's kind of like, you know, what is the best way to get myself some visibility and traction, um, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, so on my end, obviously when it comes to finding reps, it's, it's just a different path than anything. So like, it's somebody used to say is like, you can't go find direct, the rep will find you type of thing. Cause we're always searching. We're always looking for the next thing. But as a writer, I think what is very appealing to reps and at least for me personally, again, just talking more so about myself, uh, I prefer, I, it's always nice to have the two samples. So have your TV sample because there's also opportunities for TV in New York. Like they, they, they do staff stuff in New York sometimes where they need people there. So I think so always having that and then having maybe two features because that's the thing you want to do. One that maybe you're like, hey, I don't know if it's really sellable, but it shows my voice in a really great way. It can be your sample. The other one, you're like, this is an actual thing as a rep you can take out and try to sell. Um, I think when it comes to genre, I would say not, or just like the type of thing you write, I would say not to go too crazy because I think so like if each sample was so different, like, okay, this is a comedy, this is a horror, this is a fantasy, but there's no through line in your writing for it. Like I, I, I have, for example, I have a client who loves YA. So most of her characters are always around the age of like 12 to 15, but her genres kind of go throughout, but like that's still the core is like a black woman between 12 and 15 is still at core in each of those. So like you still kind of feel that. So I think so if, as long as you have your core person where then maybe the character is always having a very similar type of thing, but they find them in different places or the world is just a little different than our own. I think it's okay to expand outside of a genre. Um, as long as that through line and your voice is still coming through. I think so sometimes when people do jump from genre to the genre, it sounds too different. Like their voice in each script just sounds like a completely different writer. And that makes it a little tougher. So for, I would say for myself, uh, like if you, if I was in your shoes, 
to kind of hone in on like, okay, what are the things that I feel are the most sellable? And ones that like, again, for you, you're like, I can see this being in the theater or I can see this in terms of like, there's an audience for this. Um, and I wouldn't say that, I wouldn't put yourself like, hey, I feel like I'm maybe at a disadvantage. I think so again, regardless, good writers and great writers, I should say more so great writers will come through. I think so if you play in terms of this average kind of like, okay, it's a fine script, that's where you're gonna find people being really particular, I think so. But if you continue to push yourself and make sure like the highest caliber of what you can write and what you know you can do, that's gonna push through regardless, uh, regardless of like what your background is. Cause I think so people are always gravitating to amazing storytellers more than anything. Um, but yeah, that's that's kind of my two cents. Yeah, and 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 Jay, I think from um from a lot of my writer friends and writers that I know, most um uh, TV writers are most of the writing groups are still on Zoom. There's so you can certainly work from New York now. I know um a friend of mine um is the showrunner of Acapulco. He created the show Acapulco on Apple TV, and they're all still on Zoom and and they're all over the country. Um, and yeah. I think some of them are in Mexico too. So uh so you, uh, you know, it, it's at least for now, I think it's still a good time that you can break into TV from New York, even if it's, you know, based in L.A. And um, yeah, I agree with what with what Haley said. I think that it's good to be you can have different, you know, genres and be a little bit, you know, in different directions. I tend to do the same. I I love comedy and horror, which are kind of two different, you know, ends of the spectrum. But generally i i think i have a similar voice in those things and i think if you have you know if you're if you're applying for a job to write like what we do in the shadows let's say and you have a vampire tv show that you wrote that's a great first sample to send and then if they're like well we like this guy but we want to see something else you can send something that's you know a different genre it just shows that you can complete a, a script or that you're still a good writer I think it's fine but you definitely want to have something that's for whatever your main goal is I want to write dramas I want to write comedies you want to have one or two scripts I think that that showcase that and then you know as a backup you can have a something that's completely different just to show how versatile you can be on a sort of practical producer side of things the question really is going to be what have you done like what have you actually done yourself and that can a youtube video like a very high quality youtube video can count towards you actually having done something because at some point you it's not just how can you write it's can you envision actors saying these words can you rewrite your script to the voice of the actor that we just cast there's a whole business aspect to being a writer that isn't just how good am I at writing? Because the script is only ever the starting point. You're going to end up getting rewritten either by yourself or other people that you have no control of and definitely in the editing process. So the sort of business aspect, how are you thinking about this from a business perspective? If you come to me as a writer and you're like, hey, I think this is an X number, hundred hundred thousand to million dollar script. If we cast really smartly, like I envision this kind of actor who has this amount of value and then putting these two actors because I think they're going to pop like in a year like it's going to take you about two years to get a feature out okay how are you thinking strategically about this as a business proposition how are you thinking about it from from a writer's perspective because that's how you can kind of signal to those of us who are very much in the trenches of the industry that I'm a professional. I'm not just thinking about this as like, I wrote something cool and wanna see it. A lot of people have done that. The ones who kind of tend to, to get through are the ones who can demonstrate that they have thought of the business implications of what they've written in their script, how expensive their script is, who practically do you envision being in this? Because Tom Cruise is not gonna do a $3 million movie. Like, I wish, I wish, I think that Tom Cruise would do magic for his career if he would actually do a $3 million movie. But like, if you as a writer intrinsically understand when I'm talking to you as a producer, the difference between a $3 million movie and a $10 million movie, that's where the whole, okay, this person knows what they're talking about. Okay, that's where we can start having that conversation. So any way you can signal that you've thought about it even beyond just the writing of, is great. And never discount the power of local filmmaking. 
there are people all around you who are probably in the same boat, who have these skills or want to develop these skills. So just like go out and start writing stuff and shooting stuff, even if you're not going to show it to anyone. Just the power of doing and just seeing how things get done, how things break and how you can quickly put them back together because TV especially, like I had a friend who I got text from at like 3 a.m. and I was like, why are you up? And she was like, oh, so we lost our location tomorrow. So now I have to take our location from today and make it fit the scene that we had an entirely different location tomorrow. So that ability, you can't, you, you just got to do that. You can't really workshop that very easily. So just like go out and do the thing, even if you're not going to show it to anybody, there's so much value that comes from just that experience. Thank you. Yeah, those are some great thoughts. Those are really interesting thoughts all across the board from every perspective. I really enjoyed that. Um, and Gordon, do you want to jump in and tell us a bit about a project you're working on? We could help with some advice or a career. Absolutely. 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 I'm going to keep it brief because so we can fit everybody in. Uh, first of all, the panel is already phenomenal. I'm writing notes here and I'm hearing encouragement and, and ways out. Anyway, happy to be here and thanks. Thank you guys for being here. My name is Gordon Kluchez. I live in Los Angeles. I've been a, a production illustrator, storyboard artist, concept artist for over 20 years uh, here in Hollywood and also internationally. Uh, a few years back, I wanted to find new challenges and new channels for my storytelling and I, I'm taking screenwriting classes and I absolutely fell in love with it. Um, I've read countless books over and over again. Uh, I have a couple of mentors, groups, and all that. And I'm absolutely obsessed. I want to write every day, all day. Um, that's that's short of it. And so uh, I, I wrote a uh, sort of a, an urban uh, thriller drama. This is the first time I entered any competition, and um, I made quarterfinals. Uh, the festival is great, and so I'm beyond excited. Uh, and, and encouraged, and I'm just growing and learning, trying to find a way how to make this full-time. Uh, I absolutely love it. Um, I'm always at the desk writing, so. Oh, a side note, I think I recognize your name, Alex, because at this storyboard, your uh, the Don Cheeto movie, the Miles Ahead, I think I, I, I think you worked on that, I'm not quite yeah, sure. Yeah, I was associate producer on that. My company financed it, and I was I mean, oh, that's, that's amazing. I was so, um, but uh, I, my this current project is sort of an urban uh, thriller drama about a single mom fighting for the children, and you know, a little bit of a fighting for the system and all that. So that's it. Um, I'm just looking for advice, um, and actually, you already covered a lot of things and something that I've read before. Um, you know, I think the next step for me would be to find a, 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 an agent, a representative, somebody who can somebody with access but somebody you can also you know uh, show me the way and and, and uh, kind of take me to the next level uh, I'm, I'm a great student i'm very creative i've been around storytelling uh, for a while now and uh, you know what pushed me into writing actually was the fact that a lot of times the creators would get stuck with their narrative and the writing whatever so while drawing and illustrating everything that I was doing for them, I, I started to uh, make a lot of creative decisions for them. And so I just kind of felt the natural progression would be to start writing. And, and like I said, I'm just crazy about it. Well, I would, first thing I would say to you, Gordon, is do not lose your enthusiasm for writing because so many of us writers quickly, especially after you've been in this business, you can lose that enthusiasm. I know. It's hard to get it back. And so, uh, so do I can't, not. I can't. I can't. I'm sorry. I don't want to. I cannot tell you how many bad days you have towards, like you know, around six thirty, seven p.m. Uh, when you when all, when when the brain starts attacking you with all the questions, are you good enough? Why 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 is this person saying that? Where's the conflict? And no matter how bad of a day, I cannot wait the next morning to wake up and go at it again, right? And that's just over and over and over again. So. I'm going to fight for that enthusiasm. I'm going to keep it healthy and strong. But for right now, that's where I'm at. Yeah. And I would I would use that to write now as much as you can and get as many scripts as you can on your belt. I mean, that's the other thing I would say to all of you is that you know, there's so many people that want to write or 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 say they're writing, but they just never finish. They don't ever finish a script or whatever. And that's 
one of the biggest successes you can have is just finishing scripts. Even if they're not good, you're, you're making so much progress. So you're, and you're already above the, the crowd because there's so many people that write and they just don't finish. So use that enthusiasm, keep writing scripts, get more under your belt. You'll get, you know, better and better at it. And then when you go, you know, start submitting to agents and managers and stuff, you'll have much more material. And, and that also that enthusiasm, is is great to have when you talk to people they when they see that someone's that enthusiastic about it and that passionate you know that wears off and, that, and it make people want to work with people like that um the other thing that i would i would maybe say and and i would be curious to see what Haley and, and alex think about this is that i would maybe use your storyboarding skills in some way you know, I don't know if it's having some storyboards for your scripts. And, you know, generally we say, well, you don't want to have, you know, you, you want to give a script that looks like a script. You don't want to do anything different with it or that seems because that seems amateurish a lot of times. But at the same time, that skill of of being a storyboard artist is is cool. And I would imagine that if producers are looking at a script, it's like not only did this guy write the script, but he's a storyboard artist. And look, he visualized some of the big action scenes or whatever. I think that would be a, a really big selling point and really cool. Like, wow, this is, we're not just getting a script. We're also getting a visual representation of, of this. It's a, it would be a cool calling card, I think, to have. I would actually take that one step further because the storyboarding of it, unless you want to direct, you could potentially step on a director's toes type deal. Um, like that's something that you would want to talk with a producer. But if you are, if you can, draw in like actual artistry because I know there's some people who do storyboards a little differently but if you have that drawing capability go ahead and make a graphic novel because mm -hmm. then you have IP like even if nobody actually publishes it you have a graphic novel you can self-publish and buy 10 yourself you're putting yeah. in the time to do the graphic novel mm -hmm. like that's that's suddenly IP and if it's as good as you think it is then I can't imagine that there isn't someone that you could then take that graphic completed graphic novel to and be like this is a very easy publishing mm -hmm. pitch I and then you have that. more ip yeah i love that that's a great suggestion you know um it feels like graphic novels have sustained kind of this amazing momentum they've had behind them and people are so excited about them as ip so i think that's a wonderful <coughs> suggestion I just have a one quick one. I don't want to take too much of the time. Uh, so, what is the what is the best or easiest or the most creative, most effective way of of approaching uh, a, an agent and actually bring attention to to myself or or all of the rest of the colleagues uh, at a panel, uh, other than um, than winning competitions? Um, yeah, I mean, I think. Kelly, so. how would I how would I approach you, for example? And I, I don't mean to, you know, uh, to put, put you out there, but how would I approach you and actually bring attention to myself and have you read my, my script? Oh, good. No, I think so. I mean, uh, for my for myself, particularly yeah, outside of competitions, I mean, I am very much more so referral based at this time. Like I'm not allowed to take unsolicited material. So if somebody reached out just like, hey, I have this thing, you want to read it? I'm just not allowed to take that as a company policy. Um, a lot more managers are allowed to. And I think so the the the, the amount of managers that are now out there has grown so much. So I think so taking the shots, but also knowing, doing the research as well. Saying, like, okay, which managers, like which ones have left the agencies recently, moved to management, started their own shop, looking to grow, looking to really like dive into something new, looking for new material. I think so it's also the same when it comes to like who are junior managers or people who just got promoted to agent because they're the ones who have something to prove and they want to work hard. Um, but yeah, I mean, typically for me, it's, a, it's usually a referral. So it's like, even if you have, you make that connection with, um, through like these competitions, you start meeting people and start just developing a relationship or after you talk to someone, you're like, hey, like, I remember you, you happen to know this person. Do you think you can make an intro? And then from there, there's a natural way. And that's kind of like, I think so for, at least for me, it's kind of the way around and unsolicited is just even being intro to a rep. Uh, casually to even just do like a general, hey, getting to know you, what are you looking for, da, 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 and then like giving yourself a beat and be like, okay, hey, I have something I would love to present to you now that I've had a chance to really think about like you and what you're excited about. Um, I tend to see that as well because I've had people who just like, hey, a writer just wants to get to know reps and just ask questions and I'm always down to do stuff like that. I don't know if every rep is down to do that. I am just because like not everyone has the access to all of this. And like, I definitely did it when I came into the business. So if I can ever give it back and to at least be able to open that part up. Um, but that's something that's, that's, that's usually how, at least for me, where it comes to it, it can, it's tough because there's still this wall 
that you have to cross over. Um, but even through these competitions, I think so like people who run them, they have the connections to us too. So like, even like if you make the semifinals or something like, Hey, can you make an intro? Would you be able to help mm -hmm. get my material to a rep just to have them be able to read it for consideration? Um, especially because they work with so many, I think so that's an opportunity for them to also be able to help you guys out with. Awesome. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. I'm out. <laughs> That was awesome, Gordon. That was such a cool discussion. Um, and I'm going to jump over to you, Brett. Um, if there's a, a career question, we can help you with a roadblock or a specific project we could give some advice on. Uh, sure. My name is Brett Bowker. I'm a screenwriter in Seattle. Um, the most recent, I produced and filmed a, my own documentary some years ago, full feature. Um, I currently work as a private investigator and I coach high school lacrosse. Um, I have 10 spec features that some are better as samples, others are good to sell. Um, I'm most recently proud that I was at Austin a few weeks ago with three second round features. Um, so where I am is trying to like push into the realm of getting the industry to notice me. Um, so that's, you know, kind of what we're all trying to talk about, but, um, full disclosure, Haley, two of your junior coordinators have been sitting on my scripts for a while. They mentioned okay. so I'm I've been I'm now being obnoxiously persistent. Hey, so. I will make sure to mention to them as well then. <laughs> so yeah. Alberto and Joe. So <laughs> been oh, okay. I'll I'll talk to Joe. Albert actually recently left. So that's probably right. why you've never <laughs> you heard yeah. him at all. He and like they all like to vanish when I ask them. So but, <laughs> yeah, so it's it's about getting getting in front of people who want and getting reads as we all are trying to do is getting just reads. Yes or no's, but just getting visibility is where I'm at now from the yeah. industry. Yeah. And I think so there's definitely a way in terms of like the persistence. It's like, it's good like to continue to follow up. I think so there is a level of it. I know I've had people where I've told them like, hey, I don't say, for example, this is just me. I've, when people send me things, they're like, hey, you want to read? I was like, hey, I don't take unsolicited material. Or I've met someone at a festival or something like that. And we exchange information and they send it. Um, for me, I'm just a slow reader just because the amount of things that are now coming in is just, as the the more years you get grow into, into being a rep, the more material just starts coming, especially because I'm like one of the younger ones. They're just like, let's give you everything. You have no life, right? You can read all this stuff. And I'm like, I would like to have a little bit of a life. And, and I miss my naps uh, <laughs> every once in a while. Um, so I think so the, the way around it is like, it sounds like, again, you've been very respectful in terms of the boundaries of like, hey, you follow up a certain amount of times, so, hey, I'm doing this. And so anytime you update, like you email, you follow the update. And so there's a patience with it because I think so that also pays off. Like again, my first client that I ever signed, I think it took me almost three months until I read her material. Um, and it was someone I just met at an event and I was like, yeah, send me your stuff. And then I realized I was so overwhelmed and I was like, okay, I'm going to make it through all this stuff. Like, and I at least try to make sure I do the respectful things like, hey, it's going to take me a bit. I will read it, like follow with me in a couple of weeks just to stay on top of mind. Um, I think one way that's also helpful, like it's great that you went to Austin because I think so one way to kind of continue to get in front of people is by going out and networking with other writers. I do think like building your network of that too, that really does expand just like your knowledge you learn from people. You hear other stories about producers or this, you're like, hey, what do you think about this producer? And a writer can be like, oh, I'm, I've worked with that producer don't do that or like, hey, they're amazing. You should talk to them or this. And like, I think so being able to get a sense from people who are also navigating it around the same time, they're probably going to be interacting with some of the same people. Um, so I've known and I've had clients who that's how I, again, that's how I've ended up meeting them because they've met other people through Austin or something like that and coming back to LA. So we'll say, hey, I actually just met this person. You should get to know them. And those relationships start coming uh, together. But um, I definitely think like, I'll talk to Joe. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be like, yo, what up? Don't take too long on scripts because it sounds like it was a big, especially if you reached out to Albert, uh, who's not here anymore, um, yeah. and, and, and check in and make sure that uh, the timing and stuff can happen. And again, I know people lose those times, but I think like there was a rule that like, I think so I used to always say is like the one, one, three rule, which was like, okay, you follow up. And this was more so for like a mentor thing because you don't want to bother your mentor too much, but it's like, Okay, you follow up in a month and you give them updates about your life. You check how they're doing. Okay, you follow up in another month. You do that so you stay on their radar and then you give them like three months and then you show back up. You're like, hey, did it forget you? So I think so there's strategies into it. But um, I think staying persistent in a way where you're respectful of their time is also something because some people will get pissed off if you poke them too much. And I've seen that happen where people are like, okay, they just bothered me too much. Now I don't want to read it in spite of that um, because reps can be petty. <laughs> so also just keep that in mind. <laughs>
Yeah. Patrice and Alice, I don't know if you guys have any advice. I, I feel bad to just like be no, really I, I, I agree. <laughs> I agree with what you said about, you know, writers just getting to know as many people as you can, you know, writers groups and, and networking and going actually going to festivals and meeting people i i tend to find that um that people generally want to help each other out that we're all sort of in this together kind of kind of thing even though you're competing a lot but especially and when one person has success they're usually very uh great so grateful for that that they want to try and help their friends and and in any way they can so i think yeah, you you have friends that are like, oh, I know this producer, and that's how I I got started. One of my my first screenplays, my friend was uh, a hip hop, or he had an agent at CAA, and I had written the script, and he read it, and he gave me some notes, and and then he liked it, and he said, okay, I'll give it to my agent, and and they took to the same thing. It took them two three months to read, and I thought, oh, they didn't like it, and then the guy called me, he's like, I like your script, I want to send it out as a writing sample, mm -hmm. so. I think that that's definitely, you know, it does sometimes take time, but it doesn't necessarily mean that they don't like it. And, um, and yeah, just the, the more people, you know, you can say, Hey, do you know anyone I could send this to? And, and eventually someone, someone will. Yeah. Always keep in mind that this industry is a marathon and you have to cultivate the art of not taking shit personally, because yeah. there's any number of reasons that your scripts aren't getting picked up that they're not getting passed around I cannot tell you the number of scripts that I've read and been like you sent that to me but in and when you start digging it turns out that like whoever wrote it has a very good friend who's an A-list actor who said yeah sure I'll be in it and so now that rep is obligated to send it to you like there's so many shenanigans that go on in the industry it's really not about y'all so you know, keep doing your thing, keep going to those film festivals. It is like every job I've gotten that's advanced my career in a significant way has been through a referral, except for one where someone just randomly found my website. <laughs> I don't know what search terms they use, but they just found me. And, but you need to cultivate that network, which can be very hard to do outside of Los Angeles or New York, but going to those film festivals, there's a whole level of working filmmakers that travel the filmmaker, filmmaker circuit with short films, with, you know, documentaries, with just go to the ones that are local, like go to the ones that are far away if you can. Just be cognizant that you're kind of putting yourself out there. I have a friend who does a, she has two tricks. One, she takes a certain number of business cards and her goal is I will give all of these business cards out by the end of whatever thing I'm at. But once she's out of business cards, she is like, can go to the free bar, can go get the free food, whatever reward she needs. I have another friend who has very trouble, a lot of trouble starting conversations. So they actually have a series of pins that say like joy, love, laugh, entertaining. And so if they're at a film festival and they see someone short and it had a particular feeling in them, they'll be like, hi, this is a pin that like represents how I felt about your film or like that I wanted to give you just as a symbol of how much I enjoyed this experience. And it's always, always a conversation starter that you will absolutely remember. Mm -hmm. And she got it from a teacher who did that, who brought uh, her kids to a film, a short uh, film festival that I went to. And the kids were all teenagers who were scared to talk to like the real adults and the filmmakers. And that's how the kids, she, she made it an assignment for them. Like you have to give away five of these pins and it can be to anyone. And like when we all, when the filmmakers found out about it, we were like, okay, I'm going to judge myself on whether or not I get pins from these kids. And so she just adopted that into her like networking thing. And it just become like, you won't forget that. So what can you kind of do to make yourself memorable? Not only in the like, I made a cool thing sense, but also this is such a business of personalities. And like, will I get along with you? Can you take a note? Can I come to you as the producer and be like, hey, I know you wanted to blow up the world, but we're only allowed to blow up Manhattan and know that you're going to take that with grace and just incorporate it into the story. Like everything you do, every interaction that you kind of curate with people is basically saying to them, hey, I'm not only a good writer, but I am a person that you want to do business with and spend upwards of three years with because you're going to get close contact with those people. Like it's going to be peas in a pod. And sometimes it's going to be the sibling rivalry of like, you can't say anything to the, my director, but I'm going to kill my director. Like, I'm going to walk over to my director's house and just we're going to have a knockdown drag out fight. Like you, those, that stuff comes up and you also go through a cycle of hating your project and loving your project and hating it again. 
so it's developing those tools and kind of flagging to people like, you know, I also have these tools in my toolkit to help to, to work with you with. Nice. Yeah, those are a lot of really awesome thoughts and ideas about, you know, the different circuits available to us and how to how to be memorable and start conversations and build relationships and how to follow up while being persistent enough to get read while not so obnoxious that people refuse to read you on that basis. That was really funny, Haley. I really enjoyed that. Um, so those are a lot of great thoughts. Um, we have three people left, so I'm going to be try to be really disciplined about time. Um, I'll have you jump in, Olivia, if you'd like to ask um, a career question or share a bit about a project and have us weigh in on some advice. Yeah. Hi, um, so I'm Olivia. I'm a, I call myself a baby screenwriter because I'm young and I'm just starting out. I'm currently getting my master's at Boston University in TV producing and writing. Um, having a great time. Definitely more interested in TV writing, but I started out mm. writing features so and like working in that, but TV definitely is interesting to me. Um, and when I finish my master's at the end of this year, I'm going to LA to, you know, get internships, get jobs. And I guess kind of similar to everybody else, being someone young who maybe doesn't have as large of a profile of a portfolio, but is growing it and, but it wants to break into that industry, but also, you know, wants to have um, like more stability. What is like the best way to do that while also, you know, maintaining the writing career, putting yourself out there and like, getting attention from people who can get you in the room with agents and managers, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, I mean, first, don't call yourself a baby writer. I feel like that always just like tells, like pours people down and stuff. I think so. It's weird to say like emerging because it's like you are emerging into this world as a writer, like you are coming into your own. And I think so that can happen at any point in time in terms of your career. I feel like when people say baby writer, they dismiss you. Like, oh, you don't know anything. Okay, baby writer. And you're like, no, it's like, that's not the case. Because again, it's like, for example, yeah, like as Jay said, like he's was working as software engineer for how many freaking years, like forever. So it's like, you're not a baby, <laughs> like you're an adult. Yeah. Um, I think the one thing you can definitely do is, um, I mean, I think so, especially because you're coming out of grad school, I think internships are helpful. I mean, if you're able to do one at a company where, at like a production company or management company, I think that's something that is beneficial because it gives you a chance to see the hub of what development really looks like. Um, but also you're going to get a view of all the scripts that do come into them. You're just like, okay, why are these scripts coming to them? Which ones make sense? And you get to see why they're making certain movies that they make. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's the same thing if you're interning at a management company, because at that point, it's, it's kind of like an agency, but a little bit, obviously more smaller and obviously a little bit more specific with writers where you get to see the day-to-day -day of development with writers. I'm like, okay, why did these managers choose these writers? Why are they developing this project specifically? Why are they doing that? And I think Again, the part that Alex had pointed out was like, is building that network um, to take those internships to do even a small company like that, I think is helpful. And I think most internships now are paying as well, just because since like the black swan of it all, I think so that's when it, I mean, I didn't get paid at any of my internships. I remember I helped a college student I went to school with get an internship and he's like, I can drive you to work. I was like, shit, I'll take a, drive, I'll take a ride to work. Didn't realize he was getting paid. And that's why he was so thankful for the internship. I was like, oh, I was like, I was like, wow, I'm just like, you're getting unpaid. I, like, I've never seen someone so excited for that. Like, I mean, I was excited for my internships, but also knowing like to make a living, I think also one thing to do, it's like when I, I mean, when I was out here, when I first moved out here, I think what I started to do was like temp jobs to help mm -hmm. like just pay the bills, but gave me the flexibility to look for the right position that I want to be in. Um, I've had friends who start out and they'll work in like nonprofit or do something where the days aren't too long. Um, and not as time consuming when you're out, when you clock out where you can focus on your writing. So you're like, okay, I do a nine to five job. I can clock out. Let me go to my writer's group. Let me go to this. Let me go to the screening. And I think that benefited them until they were able to build the right amount of material that they're like, now I feel like I'm really good with this. Yeah. Um, and obviously you go to BU. So you also have an extensive alumni group. Like I, a couple of our assistants and a couple of my former colleagues were all from BU and um, some of them who I work with now also uh, went to BU. So I think so like you have an extensive alumni base that you can always reach out to and be like, hey, like I would love to do an informational interview, sit down and expand your network that way too, which I think is important. Yeah, and I, I think um, I, I started when I got, when I was in college, I, I interned for a producer and 
uh, read a lot of scripts. And then I was hired as story editor when I graduated and, and read a lot more scripts. And, um, and, you know, even though I went to film school, I feel like I learned more about writing, reading all those scripts than mm -hmm. I did in any film school class. Um, in I've had, I've heard very young people tell, say, oh, I tried an internship and I found it was soul sucking. I don't, I don't like doing that. I don't want to do that. And it's like, yeah, it is, but that's the point of it. It's kind of, you got to kind of stick it out and you, cause you learn so much and especially reading all those scripts and you're going to read so many bad scripts, but you'll learn from those bad scripts as well as the good scripts, sometimes more. So I think it is really important to do those things. And then, yeah, as far as what, what Haley said about being a baby writer, don't, yeah, I don't sell yourself short. You are, you are a young female writer. You have a perspective that most of Hollywood would kill. They want to appeal to people th that are your age and you can bring that to the table, which a lot of more accomplished writers can't. They don't, they don't know what, what your demographic is looking for and they want to target that demographic. So you have that to, to come and say, I know what, what people my age are looking for and want to see. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and that should be, you know, you should be proud of that and, and, and say, I, I can bring that perspective in my writing and, and someone will want that perspective for sure. So I have an MFA from UCLA for producing for film and television. Oh, this is the one thing that I did <laughs> not do that. I desperately wish that I could rewind back in time and do, yeah. which is, I was out of school by the time I realized that people will give you meetings as a student that they won't give you as a person just out there in the world trying to do this thing. So lean into the fact that you are a student mm -hmm. and just swallow the rejection, whatever, because it does not matter if they reject you or they don't reply to your email. Cold email anybody that you want, anybody you respect, and just be like, hi, I am a student from BYU. I am here for the summer doing this make up and or pitch a project, a separate project to BYU if you have another year and be like, I'm going to interview all of these people in the industry and I'm going to make up a report, whatever. Give yourself a legitimate like assignment that you are completing that you can reach out to these people because no one in the industry loves anything more than to know that they are having an impact on the generations below them and coming up and that they are relevant. So if you as a student, because you as a student aren't asking for a job, you're not asking for a like referral for a job, anything even though in your head this is 100 percent the foundation of eventually asking you for a job right yeah you will you will be amazed the power of being a student has and the amount of like it takes out of the and the potential badness of a meeting or the potential like mm, i don't know if i want to take this meeting just putting yourself out there and being like all i want from you is education so I would, that's, that's what I wish I had done when I was at UCLA. Like if I had realized that, that I could just like cold email anybody and a percentage of them are hundred percent going to get back at you and you will, you will get in the door. And while you're there, if it goes well, because you're young, ask them if you can follow them on Twitter. Instagram's mm -hmm. a little bit, eh, I mean, Twitter's going down the drain, but some people have public Instagrams. Do your research on people in a not creepy way before okay. you ever have a meeting with them. <laughs> Those Thank are great you. thoughts. Those are great thoughts. Um, and I know we have two people left, so I'm going to try to be be uh, mindful of that. Eminence, would you like to ask um, us a career question or some advice or thoughts on a project? We'd love to hear from you. Yeah, I would love to. Um, so um, I'm Eminence, I'm 32. I'm from Belgium. And uh, the question I have, um, basically in... Um, I'm, uh, for the moment, I'm working as an office administrator, and in uh, 2020, like everybody else, I had like a, uh, a, due to the pandemic, some kind of breakthrough and felt like that if I'm never going to start screenwriting uh, now, I'm never going to do it. So it's something I've always been passionate about. And so I entered several screenplay uh, competitions. Um, and that immediately humbled me down because uh, screenwriting is not as easy as my ego um, told me it was going to be, but that's not a problem. I got a lot of great feedback uh, from the competitions. And so this year I entered a uh, the Big Apple Fantas uh, Film Festival. And so my script got a... Um, honorable mention, which I'm pretty proud of. But the thing that I noticed is that I do miss some kind of network when it comes to um, uh, talking or working with other screenwriters. 
So I was just wondering what do I do best to build my uh, my network and um, yeah, how, where do I go from from here, uh, basically? Well, um, you know, I, I've one thing that I've never done that I've always wanted to do um, is is, you know, find some of these writers groups. So, you know, I'm sure if you searched Facebook, um, yeah. you know, you can find there's there's a lot of writers groups out there. And I know other people that have done them and find them really beneficial. Um, so, you know, looking through Facebook, I would even, you know, searching even just just general, you know, Google searches for the area you're in and see, you never know, you'd be surprised that there's screenwriters in Belgium, there's screen, you know, you could find groups wherever, which would be a good way. And then, um, and then, yeah, and just, and then keep writing. I mean, uh, you know, I have another friend who's a very successful writer that, um, that, that talks about screenwriting, like going to the gym, that if you want to get in shape, you got to go to the gym every day. And you got to sit down as even though you're tired and you don't want to do it, you got to get yourself to the gym and work out. And it's the same thing with writing. It's like if you want to be a, a, a good writer, you got to get up every day and at least leave some time uh, in your in your day and just and keep at it. And you'll you'll inevitably get better and um, and be more accomplished. We also just kind of had a great explosion in the chat of everyone sharing their emails. And I, I think eminence with these people, you've already got a writer's group put together oh. like Taylor made so many people just shared their emails and, and other contacts. So that would be a great starting point. Yeah. And awesome. Thank you guys. <laughs> yes. Yes. Everybody kind of jumped in. Um, and um, also, you know, this of course is an, a digital event, but many festival things are in person um, and and filled with writers and writers can can vary on the spectrum from introverted to extroverted, but mostly they're a little introverted. And I'm sure a lot of them would actually be thrilled if you put forth that you want to meet more writers and get to know more people and put together more writing groups. I think a lot of people would be grateful for that kind of initiative. I think people would really respond to that. Um, that was an awesome share. I mean, thank you. And I'm going to move on to Molly so that she has a little bit of time before we go. Um, Molly shared in an earlier session a psychological thriller idea that was so creepy. I've been creeped out and, and, and fascinated by it ever since. So I'm very curious to see what she'll share with us now. Hi, um, just a very short um, introduction. I rolled and got selected by BFF as a finalist of my short script, basically talking about a girl struggling with facial dysmorphia and eventually found a very um, bloodiest but permanent solution. Um, I'm currently also working on documentary, um, also another feature film length of the screenplay. My question for everybody, uh, all everyone on the panelist is, because um, I really like directing, producing, and writing, three of them all together. I kind of cannot make myself focus on one sole thing. So I'm, ask, I'm curious what's the uh, suggestion you guys might have and especially like from a professional and also from the perspective of an agent, do you think it's a good idea to not focus on one thing? I will say, well, oh, oh, go ahead, Alex. I'll just say the low budget, especially if you're the director, you end up doing producing work regardless like the low the higher the budgets are the more siloed the jobs do and can get um it's really going to depend on what you want to do and what you want to focus on and where you think that you have the strongest in as a physical producer it's very hard to sustain yourself with only physical producing work and have the capacity to do other things um in your life because it's just producing is so time consuming especially as you kind of get up and up in the budgets so it really depends on where you are going to find the most fulfillment and your producing i can tell you right now your producing skills will help you literally everywhere in the industry because everything is ultimately about money so um and to so think about it for me as like as an agent um i mean doing all three i don't think it's, it's going to hurt you obviously it benefits you down the line i think myself as an agent my first thing is like okay are you writing, producing, directing for the material you love. And so you're focusing on that. And I guess the second part too, it's like, 
if you're like, hey, I want to, yeah, I want to do bigger things. I think you did need to take the time to focus on it. If you're like, hey, no, I'm just going to go make the stuff I want to make and the things that I write and I know how to go make them, then by all means. But I think so if you ever see yourself wanting to step up in terms of budgets or do something like that, I think having a focus, like being being a good writer opens those doors as a producer, opens those doors as a, as a director uh, in our business more. If you're just doing all of it and you're they're all being just okay, it makes it tough. So I think, again, if you're just doing it for yourself, that's one thing. But if you're wanting to grow and budget, I think trying to focus like, okay, the writing is going to help my directing. The directing is going to help my producing or vice versa or whatever like that. Like having one of those skills, it just always feeds into the other. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I think um, you, as long as you're not, it's not to the detriment of, well, you're not developing a skill, you know, that you're stronger in because you're focusing on those things. I think it's fine to to sort of juggle them all. And then, you know, and you you mentioned documentaries. If you, I do a lot of work in that unscripted world, which um, a lot of times, if you want to get into that world, which has similarities to the documentary world and that you're dealing with real issues, it's helpful to be able to, write produce because a lot of times that's they don't like to especially in the reality world it's they don't like to hire writers even though there's a ton of writing and it's writing but they don't want to say it's writing because it's reality so you do find yourself like i am often credited as a story producer when i did a lot of writing and then did a tiny bit of producing but i'm a story producer so it is helpful to be able to have those producing skills and those writing skills and and be able to to sort of put on those different hats especially when you're dealing in the unscripted world so it's a good thing to have yeah i think my currently direction is focusing more on writing and um directing mostly because this is what i'm most passionate about um so thank you so much for every uh all the suggestion you guys gave me and i really appreciate it and i'm not sure if there's a chance we can keep in touch but thank you so much for everything today sure. yeah it's really has been an incredible panel and again just to point out the chat many people have put in their emails or ways to find them so some people will be easy to find after this and i'm looking forward to hearing from eminence's writing group and all the great things they're they're going to achieve and it's just been a pleasure to be on here. I feel like everyone's been so honest and grounded and, and shared so many great suggestions and thoughts. It was really, really inspiring today. Thank you, guys. Amazing panel. Amazing. Thanks so much. Thank you all. Thank you, guys. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Ciao. Good luck. Bye, guys. Thank Bye. you.